Welcome you all. Let us learn today's topic osteoporosis. Osteo means bone. Porous is nothing but holes. A bone with several holes is known as osteoporotic bone. Simple. Contents, we will be looking forward for this content. We will be coming one by one in the future slides. Definition. WHO has stated that osteoporosis is nothing but a skeletal disorder or disease which is characterized by low bone mass and deterioration or destruction of the microarchitecture of the bone tissue which leads to bone fragility that means weakness of the bone causing fractures. If the bone is weak, it is highly susceptible to fracture. You can look into the image normal bone without holes and the osteoporotic bone which is with several amount of holes. Epidemiology of osteoporosis states that greater than 61 million of Indians are prone to have osteoporosis out of which 80% are of females. India comes after the Japan or followed by Japan in the prevalence history of osteoporosis and osteopenia. The mean bone mineral density BMD. This is very important when you are learning about osteoporosis. In India, in Indian women is two standard deviation lower than compared to western women. Now, as the age advances, the prevalence of osteoporosis increases. As the age advances, the bone mineral density decreases. That is when the prevalence of osteoporosis increases. Now, how much is the percentage of decrease in the bone mineral density along with the progression of age is approximately about at the age of 40, the blow bone mineral density is lower equivalent to about 40 percentage compared to normal. As the age progresses, that is about 60, at the age of 60, it is further reduced to 62 percentage. That means your bone is becoming more and more weak as the age is progressing. At the age of 65, the peak of your old age, your bone mineral density is reduced to 80% of your normal healthy bone. So just imagine a normal healthy bone having 80% reduced of its strength and what if a small trauma is occurred on such person's bone? It will be definitely susceptible to fracture. Coming down to diagnostic classification. This is based on T-score. Now, T-score is taken by bone mineral density score. This is identified by DEXA scan, which you will be learning in the future slides. Look at the arrow, which is in green and red. The green color suggests that it is normal and healthy, whereas the red color suggests that it is abnormal and maybe osteopenic or osteoporotic. Let us see what are the scores. If the T-score is lying above minus 1, that means it is normal and healthy. If the T-score lies between, look at that, it is lying between minus 1 to minus 2.5, that means the person is having osteopenia. Whereas, if the T-score is equivalent to minus 2.5, that is the last one, or lesser than that, that means the subject is highly osteoporotic. It's very severe if the person is having my, below minus 2.5. Now, why? Why is that osteopenia or osteoporosis so severe? Why osteoporosis is so severe compared to osteopenia? What will happen? Now, whenever the bone mass is reduced, bone is made up of calcium and mineral. Take out some part of calcium. For example, out of 100% of calcium, take out 80% of calcium at the age of 65, especially in women. Only 20% of calcium is remained. Now, as you know, calcium is giving strength to the bone. 80% is absorbed by some other structure. There's only 20% remaining. So, the weakness of the bone is set in. Once the weak, weakness of the bone is set in, minor trauma can lead to fragile fracture. That is known as fragility fracture. Fragility is nothing but weakness. 
a minor trauma induced on a fragile bone causing fracture is known as fragility fracture now these fracture exclude craniofacial hand ankle and foot fracture these fracture represent 80% of fracture occurring in post menopausal women at aged 50 years and older the post menopause becomes a very important classification a type of classification of osteoporosis it's that important it's a big risk factor to have or to you know be prone for osteoporosis now os fragility fracture has a greater impact on quality of life compared to diabetes copd that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or even heart disease now what is normal physiology before understanding what has happening to osteoporosis and how the bones are becoming porous let us understand what is normal physiology of the bone remodeling cycle this is known as bone re modeling cycle let us understand what it is this is your normal bone so next comes a fracture which will lead to breakage now breakage is indirectly leading to pre osteoclast synthesis osteoclasts are bone eaters now once the bone eaters are into the action and eating up the bony part which is fractured the resorption of osteoclast is also important now resorption means vanishing once this this part is eaten up the osteoclast needs to be vanished if not there is excessive degeneration or resorption of the bone so what will happen if there is excessive resorption of the bone there is no more bone left so thus resorption of osteoclast is a very important stage in remodeling now once the resorption has occurred the next stage becomes osteoblast formation that is bone formation this is bone eating and this is bone formation now osteoblast activity as discussed is bone formating activity only few osteoblasts cannot fill up the gap which is caused by the osteoclast thus osteoblast need to reproduce so leading to formation of more and more number of osteoblast this will take to the next step that is mineralization of bone as bone is made up of calcium hydroxy apatite you know that hydroxy apatite is nothing but mineralization this mineralization is very important to hold the structure of the bone thus after the mineralization we are ready to you know use up the bone like it was before the fracture this is how normal physiology looks coming down to pathophysiology of bone fragility that is it means it is we are discussing in osteoporosis there are three mechanisms causing osteoporosis first one is uncoupling of remodeling second one is production of ankle third one is osteoclastogenesis look at the first diagram for the first point that is uncoupling of remodeling we already learned in the previous slide what does the remodeling mean that means from a resting phase after the fracture the first phase is nothing but osteoclast activity the second phase is nothing but osteoblast activity and the third phase is formation of a new bone after mineralization now can you all guess me and help me in telling where is uncoupling occurring in this remodeling phase will it cause in the resting phase no absolutely not because the resting phase is a new bone formation it might not cause that either it is at 1 2 or 3 where do you think it is happening where is the knee uncoupling happening happening is it at the stage 1 so that there is no formation of osteoclast and there is no bone resorption is it that no our bone in osteoporotic is porous and for porosity we need the osteoclastic activity 
So thus, stage 1 is wrong. The uncoupling is occurring at stage 2. Now why is stage 2? Is because stage 2 is nothing but It's nothing but classed activity is more compared to blast activity. Blast activity is formation, classed activity is resorption. Thus, in osteoporosis, classed activity is more, that is resorption of bone is more compared to formation of bone. The second one is production of rankle. Production of rankle occurs when there is when the class activity or bone resorption activity is more compared to bone formation activity. The third one is osteoclastogenesis. Osteoclastogenesis is nothing but osteo the reproduction of osteoclastic cells thus increasing the bone resorption rate compared to bone formation. Sorry, this is the last slide for today's lecture. That is causative classification. Whenever we are describing about any classification of any condition, let it be frozen shoulder, let it be osteoporosis or let it even be lumbago. We have to give the title for classification. Now, this is the first classification of osteoporosis that is causative classification. What is the causing factor for osteoporosis? There are two types of causative classification. First one is primary and second one is secondary. Now, primary causative classification is defined as these two factors are most prominent risk factors which are known to definitely cause osteoporosis. The first one is age related, second one is estrogen. As we had already seen, as the age progresses, the low bone mass density increases that is as the age exceeds the bone mass density or bone mineral density decreases remember the first slide where the the epidemiology was dealt at the age of 40 40 percentage of low bone mass was found less compared to the normal bone at the age of 60 it was further reduced to 62 percentage and at the age of 65 it was further reduced to 80 percentage so, thus, as the age advances, both in men and women, both the genders, the bone mass density decreases, thus causing osteoporosis. The second one is very important, that is estrogen depletion in postmenopausal women. Now, menstruation cycle is important in maintaining the activity of, or the, sorry, the quantity of the estrogen. Estrogen is very important in maintaining the activity of the bone formation. That is activity of the osteoblast. As the estrogen starts depleting in the menopausal phase, the bone mass density gradually drops down. And once the stage is achieved at postmenopausal level, there's complete reduction of estrogen level, causing maximum low bone mass, thus leading to osteoporosis. Now, osteoporosis can also be caused secondary to any of the following condition classified under the heading of lifestyle such as alcohol abuse, smoking, hereditary, lethargic lifestyle, excessive thinness that is uh, visibly malnourished, excess of vitamin A, vitamin D insufficiency. As you already know, vitamin D is important in absorption of calcium into the body. Sedentary lifestyle, immobilization, low calcium intake, high salt intake, genetic diseases like cystic fibrosis, glycogen storage disease, osteogenesis imperfecta, hypogonadal states, endocrine states like central obesity, Cushing syndrome, hyperparathyroidism, GI disorder causing malabsorption and hematologic disorder like hemophilia, leukemia, thalassemia, myelomia, rheumatologic disorder like angspond, rheumatoid arthritis, epilepsy, dystrophy, Parkinson's disease, stroke, miscellaneous like AIDS and COPD, CHF, depression, whichever is causing low immunity, medications like antacid, thyroid hormone, parental nutrition and the rest which is decreasing the immunity of entire human body is thus leading to a risk factor, one plus point for the person or the subject to Thank you.